As Harvey continues to lose strength and make its way out of Texas, rescue teams are working around the clock to help people trapped by floodwaters. Parts of Port Arthur remain completely underwater, and just a short while ago, we witnessed a number of dramatic helicopter rescues at an apartment complex. CBS News correspondent Anna Werner is in Port Arthur, Texas, and joins us now. Anna, you've seen several of these rescues firsthand. Describe what you've been seeing today. Good news. Uh, well, because what you have is you have people who are in their homes in several feet of water, and the water came up very, very quickly. You're talking somewhere in the range of close to 30 inches of water uh, dropping in 24 hours. So the water level will begin to rise on people so quickly that they you know, quickly become in a very urgent crisis situation. And at that point, the only way to get them out of there is to bring in the rescuers, but the rescuers have to be in boats or helicopters, as you've seen some of these dramatic helicopter rescues. We know that there were police out last night rescuing entire families in boats in what have got to be very dangerous you know, conditions. We've been out during the day, today and yesterday, with both civilian and police uh, rescue teams who've been looking for people uh, and knocking on doors. And, you know, when the street is flooded, you're knocking on doors by going up in a boat, knocking on the door. Um, so what you have is you have homes and neighborhoods, certain neighborhoods. You know, Port Arthur itself, we're in the downtown area right now. And the downtown area uh, with the businesses is, is pretty dry. It's the problem is you get into these certain neighborhoods with homes and that's where the flooding occurred and that's where the people are. And Anna, you mentioned dangerous conditions and I think people are looking at, at the pictures right now that the sun is out, but this isn't just a helicopter trying to do a rescue in an open field. What are the rescuers telling you about, the? I guess, their concerns as well, trying to do this in these uh, areas with all the homes and wires that we see as well? Well, you can imagine, you said, you know, wires. I mean, you can, you can easily imagine what the dangers might be for a helicopter and somebody dropping from a helicopter to pick people up, right? If they're on a line, if the wind moves them, it's not terrifically windy here and it is sunny, so that helps. But um, in particular, the dangerous conditions for people who are out in the boat, you have kind of this civilian, you know, volunteer group of people who showed up with their boats and the police are asking for their help because they don't have enough vehicles of their own to get out and get all these people. They need the help. But if you're a volunteer, you, a lot of these people are coming from other areas. We've met people from Louisiana, from Dallas, from Houston, from, heck, we saw a guy from Milwaukee who drove, drove wow. all the way down here with a boat from the company Evinrude to try to give away to the police to give them something to work with um, and couldn't get to where he needed to drop the boat off. So, you know, the problem is when, like, we were out yesterday with some of these quote-unquote volunteer rescuers, and they're, you're, you, we're basically, we were on in a boat going across a highway bridge, which is 20 feet above where a creek would be, except the bridge was almost completely submerged. Oh. All we could see was the guardrail, and we were literally going across the highway bridge in the water. So then you can imagine, you get off that bridge, there are power lines, there are poles, there are fence, fence posts, there are fences themselves, there are um, electrical wires. And we were, you know, we're helping them navigate as we're in the boat saying, hey, you got a power line over here to the right. You got a power line over here to the left. Watch out. Watch your head. Here comes a tree branch. You can imagine how quickly dangerous that situation could become. And so a lot of these people are risking more than just their boat propeller. You know, they might be risking their lives to go out there and save other people simply because they think that's what they need and want to do and ought to do. And, and as you say that, that, it's that simple. They are trying to save other people. Do they have any idea of how many more people in that area may need help right now? Well, I think actually that they are, um, have accomplished done a pretty good job in the last few days of pulling out a lot of people in some really dire stormy conditions. Um, and so they've, you know, they've pulled out, the estimate is somewhere upwards of 10,000 people, which is a heck of a lot of people. Um, and I think that they are, you know, we've been talking to the police. They've been do, going in what they call it grid search. You know, they, they map the area out in a grid and they go block by block in that grid to make sure they don't miss anybody. And when we were with them today, they were going through some of the last grid areas. So, you know, I think the hope is that they have uh, reached a lot of these people as it stands right now. But then on top of that now, a lot of these people went to hotels, other places, for example, in Beaumont. Beaumont is fairly dry, but it's surrounded by uh, water that it makes it 
difficult, if not impossible, to get into Beaumont. And, of course, that affects supplies of things like water. Well, Beaumont lost its public water supply. Right. So that stacks a crisis, potentially, on top of another crisis. That means now everybody's going to go to the Walmart or wherever. There's, a, there's maybe one, you know, store they can get to or a couple of grocery stores, and all the water's going to disappear. Well, then, now then what? Now what if they don't? So now, it, what if, you know, you can't get into town, you can't get out of town, um, except for people who have SUVs. We drove in last night. It was a little dicey, i got to be honest, um, going through floodwaters at some points on Highway 90 coming into town. It was pretty deep. And we saw some cars for people who tried in regular cars and couldn't get through, no surprise, because the cars are, cars are too low to the ground. And, uh, and it was kind of dicey even for us, you know, kind of wondering, okay, we had, we had been told by police that they had gone through not 20, uh, 20 minutes before, and they said, you will make it through, you're okay. But, right. you know, when you're in it at night, you're kind of wondering, and, and officials will tell people not to repeat that experience, not to do that. And in fact, they may actually have that highway closed off. I heard on the radio that that highway may even be closed off. Well, if it's closed off, and you need more water because Bulma doesn't have water and you need more food. You know, it, it, I mean, hopefully they will get the water supply fixed as soon as possible. But that is, that, you know, for, for evacuees, that's a you know, problem because now they're in a hotel and needing everything. Exactly. And we are going to actually get a check about, about that water supply in just a moment. Anna Warner with some dramatic pictures and stories for us from Port Arthur, Texas. Anna, you guys stay safe as well. We appreciate the report. Thanks, Dan.